Normally, we bring you the number of new cases of COVID reported in our state, but today the Georgia Department of Health says a large amount of data is overwhelming the system and they don't have the number of new cases. So far in the pandemic, our state has seen more than 1.4 million cases, more than 26,000 deaths, and more than 94,000 people admitted to the hospital. Children's Healthcare of Atlanta says it has 102 patients hospitalized with COVID-19. That is the highest number of kids with the virus in their system so far in the pandemic. But Children's says it has three hospitals and enough capacity to see and treat patients. The surge in infections has also impacted schools, as the Fox Medical Team's Beth Galvin explains. The research studies so far show that the Omicron variant causes less severe disease than the Delta variant, but it's also much more contagious. And that makes returning to the classroom after the holidays complicated. With schools reopening and coronavirus cases surging, public health microbiologist Dr. Amber Schmidtke says many parents are torn about sending kids back to class. As a parent, it is kind of a, a scary thing. With something as, that spreads as quickly as Omicron does and as easily as it does, you do wonder how they can successfully pull off school lunch, for example, where everybody has to take their mask off at once. Schmidtke says the good news is the Omicron variant surge will likely peak quickly, maybe by the end of the month. But in the meantime, she says, because because this variant is so contagious, a lot of people will get sick or test positive. You know, if you don't take Omicron seriously, it will kind of disrupt your life. Um, and so I think that it's in school's best interest to have as much control in that disruption as they can. And you get that control from limiting the spread as much as possible. And with the metro Atlanta area seeing intense virus transmission right now, Schmidtke says it makes sense for school districts like Atlanta, DeKalb, Fulton, Clayton and Rockdale counties to pivot to remote learning, at least in until next week to really just sort of let that disease transmission that probably happened over the Christmas holidays and late winter holidays um, to kind of calm down before bringing people back into the building. It also gives them time um, to strategize and to come up with, um, you know, contingency plans. And Schmidtke says now is a good time for families to upgrade their masks from cloth masks to more protective KN95 or N95 masks. She recommends the nonprofit website projectn95.org, which sells both adult and kid size masks. And they have vetted the different masks that are out there so that you know that you're not buying something counterfeit and you can trust that it actually works. And so, you know, we, we just need to be careful, you know, just because Amazon is very convenient and it'll be there in two days doesn't always necessarily mean that you're buying what you think you're buying. And in addition to authorizing booster shots for teenagers 12 to 15, the FDA has also cleared the way for a third shot for children who are 5 to 11 who are immunocompromised. And the CDC will make its final recommendations later this week. For your Fox Medical Team, I'm Beth Galvin.